Today I'm going to talk about hustle propaganda, the glorification of busy, and how it affects INFJs or other highly sensitive people. Hi, I'm Annie, and I'm less of a miserable cow than I used to be. I'm feeling about 5% miserable right now. I just went out and ran errands, and I was in traffic, and man, it's just really abrasive out there. <laughs> I seem to need more sleep and downtime than other people, and I need to be alone like I need air and water. I need quiet contemplation. I can't seem to juggle too many responsibilities at once. I don't like to be overextended and have a lot of obligations in my life. Now don't get me wrong, I like a good challenge, and I think that I have a really good work ethic. I just can't seem to handle as much as other people do. You know, there are school teachers who have three kids of their own and they're driving for Uber and Lyft on their off time just to make enough money to make ends meet. Now, this isn't right. I'm sure most of us agree that teachers should be paid more. But where you really see hustle propaganda and the glorification of busy, I mean, you kind of see it everywhere, but particularly with entrepreneurs and small business owners. I myself am a small business owner. Really, if you look at the financial definition of a small business, though, I forget the number, but it's really big. It's a lot of money. So most people who say they have small businesses, what they actually have are micro businesses. If you make less than $100,000 a year, certainly that is a micro business. That's like nothing. I make less than 50, less than 40, less than 30. I don't make very much. So what I have going on is definitely a micro business. And it's a micro business that I do put a lot of passion and energy into. But I'm not bleeding out my eyeballs, so I might not be trying hard enough, according to hustle propaganda. You hear people sometimes saying, oh, I only sleep four hours a night because, you know, I'm up working on my side gig. And sometimes they say this with some kind of pride. And that's the world we live in. Really, if you think logically about efficiency, we should theoretically be able to achieve more if we have the sleep and the basic health and we're able to take care of ourselves, right? Then we can actually achieve more. But the way that our society is set up, it doesn't allow that. You just have to go, go, go. Because anybody can succeed. You know, that's the American dream. Anybody can succeed. But if the guy next to you is willing to hustle harder than you are, then you lose. So we just keep upping the ante, you know? Just every next person has to work harder than the last person. We're all trying to out-hustle each other so that we can be the one at the top. Everybody can't win. Everybody doesn't get to be at the top. And we're all just trying to make it. This is a very unhealthy way to live. But I think it's particularly challenging for sensitive people. And I think that for some listening, this will sound like a cop-out. Oh, poor thing. She can't handle too much responsibility. Here, let me take some of that load for you. But the thing is, I am passionate about my work and I do try really hard and I do have a really strong work ethic. But how much is required? How much should be required? Is it okay for me to put forth a reasonable amount of effort and passion into the work that I do and then be provided for? Have basic needs provided for? Is that okay? Or is that not allowed? Is that entitled? To expect to be safe to be able to afford groceries, have shelter, have basic health care. I really have a huge chip on my shoulder about this because I know that that opinion is out there. That if you're not making it, you're just not trying hard enough. If you're not bleeding out of your eyeballs, you're not trying hard enough. But what if we all tried that hard? There's not room for everybody to make it. So then we have to up the ante higher. We have to try even harder. I just don't think it's healthy or sustainable or really enriching or nourishing for all of us. I think that if we had more time to take care of ourselves and sleep and contemplate, then we could actually achieve greater things. Challenge is important. Challenge produces results. The right amount of challenge is healthy. It increases creativity and innovation. It gives you something to push against. If you have everything and you're 100% provided for, there's no challenge. You don't need to struggle to rise out of that. So I can really see the value in challenge. But do we really need this much stinking challenge? Do we need this much? I don't think it's reasonable. I, this is maybe an unpopular opinion. Speaking of unpopular opinions, 
in my heart of hearts, I really do believe that we should all have basic health care and maybe we should all have a basic living wage. Now, I don't understand global economics and I'm not really interested in it. So I don't know if this idea of basic living wage is possible. You know, there are theorists who say, no, that'll never work. And other people say, yes, it will. I don't, I'm not going to solve that. <laughs> but I do know that one of the arguments against basic living wage is that it will make people more lazy. They won't create and innovate. They won't want to do anything ever. I have a couple of thoughts on this. Number one, I think it depends on your personality type. I think that some people will still want to create and they will still be driven even if basic needs are taken care of. Now with basic living wage, we're not talking about a whole lot of money. We're just talking about being able to afford a simple dwelling, you know, a roof over your head, some groceries, and you have health care. From there, if you want more money, then you work and you earn more money so that you can get all the things, all the shiny objects that your heart might desire. The other thing I think about it is that probably some people will be really lazy and who cares you know there's a whole range of people i think that some people are still going to be creatives and innovators and they're going to do stuff and they're going to want to have their hands in projects that are valuable and meaningful for the world and some people are going to be really lazy they're not going to be driven i think that sounds like a boring life to me but i have a certain personality type that wants to create but even if there are lazy people who don't do much, I still feel like it is okay for their basic, basic needs to be met. Unpopular opinion. Because it's 2020. Are we civilized? I mean, can everybody eat food? <laughs> can everyone have drinking water? I understand that I'm privileged. I'm making a YouTube video right now on my iPhone. I didn't necessarily have the money for that iPhone. Or this new guitar that I just bought last week. <laughs> I'm kind of impulsive. Um, it was a really cheap used guitar, but still, I didn't have the money for it. I just went to the grocery store and I spent $97. <laughs> I was born in 1977, so that is really a shock for me that it's even possible. I mean, it was just like two small bags of groceries. So I'm not good with money. You know, maybe I'm frivolous or I spend all my money on art supplies. You know, that's a character flaw. I suppose. And I realize that I'm privileged to do that. I live in a house, sort of. It's a long story. My living situation is unusual. I'll tell you about it sometime. I happen to live in a really liberal state that takes care of people, so I have health insurance. Even though I'm self-employed and it's really difficult to get health insurance, I have it. And it's only because my income is so low that my health care is actually more comprehensive than if I made a little bit more money and I was somewhere in the middle. It's kind of weird how our system is set up. So people mean a lot of different things when they say that they don't make very much money and it's something that people don't really talk about. But sometimes I wonder if we should because there's a lot of people going around, especially entrepreneurs, seem to be pretending that they're doing really well. And a lot of times I suspect that they are not doing as well as they say they are doing because that's sort of part of the game. Like, how's it going in small business for you? Oh, it's going great, you know, I have so much freedom, I work from anywhere in the world, I have a six-figure income. You wanna take my seminar on how you can also have a six-figure income? Six figures per month, I mean. I don't know that everybody is really doing as well as what they were saying. So I'm a massage therapist. Um, we don't really talk about how much money we make in general, it's not polite. I think maybe we should. I made $26,000 last year. That was my best year ever. And that was before expenses. So that's not profit, <laughs> you know. There's a, I mean, rent is one of the biggest expenses, but there's a whole bunch of other things, you know, online services, having a website, maintaining a website. You are nobody without a website these days, so it's a necessary expense. There's all kinds of things that add up. So people are hustling a lot. They're projecting a really positive energy. Being self-employed is great, I'm really making it, I have so much freedom, but maybe they're not always doing as well as they say they're doing. And I think that's part of the problem. It's contributing to the hustle propaganda. And I'm not saying that it should be easy to have a small business. It's one of the most rewarding challenges. And I love it. 
but I'm not cracking the code. I just have never made very much money. I'm not very good at it. I do think I'm a good massage therapist. Um, you'll just have to take my word for that. I mean, uh, I mean, of course, that's what's that's what I would say, isn't it? I do think I'm good at my job. I have good relationships with my clients, and I think I'm good at my job. So I don't know. I have a chip on my shoulder about this because I don't want to sound ungrateful or like I'm just complaining. Um, but this is a real thing. We keep upping the ante and there's no way I can ever hustle that hard. I know that I can't. And I think that partially has to do with just being a highly sensitive person and being the kind of person that needs more downtime, needs more quiet time, needs alone time. I just can't be on all the time. So there's this idea in America, the American dream, that anyone can make it. But really, not everyone can. And so it becomes this cutthroat race. The American dream requires more and more blood, sweat, and tears. And that intensity in our current times is just turned up so high. And you know, my partner and I were talking about how winning the lottery can ruin people's lives. You know, when they have when people suddenly have a lot of money, it can really ruin their lives. And we were wondering if that would happen for us. How, how would our lives change? We're both intuitive, introverted, creative people. And what we both really believe is that we would still be creating art. We would still be innovating. And we would still be so deeply creating and expressing in a meaningful way that contributes value to the world would still be important to us. Because if you think about it, we're putting a lot of effort into those things now, he and I both are, and there's nothing in it for us, except for just the joy of creating and sharing. I'm more of a sharer, I'm more into sharing with people. I feel like he's an INTP, but it's hard to type people. And I'm an INFJ. So he's highly creative, but it's more, but he's not so much into sharing with people the way that I am right now. I really love this YouTube thing and I think a lot of INFJs enjoy this kind of communication. So we feel like if we had more money, I mean everything that we do to try to get more money is to build a life so that we can continue to be creative people and so that we can have even more time to be creative people. Massage therapy, which is what I do, is not a high earning career, but I love it because it does allow me time to do these kinds of things. It's amazing that it is a, um, a Monday afternoon and I have time to make this video. That's because of the career that I chose. And what we work towards, he and I, is making money that we can save to someday live in a house together. <laughs> we live next door to each other. That's the weird situation I mentioned before. It, it is a long story though, but it's an unusual situation. And by living this way, we are saving tons of money. And we've been doing this for years and it's, it works for us. Anyway, I think that that is all I have to say about hustle propaganda. I'll probably think of some more things after I turn off this recording. But I want to know what you think. Are you a highly sensitive person? Are you an INFJ? And how do you feel about hustle propaganda? Do you feel like you can juggle as many responsibilities as a lot of people seem to be able to? Because I know I sure can't. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment. Let's get to know each other.